Okay, everybody, this has been with BRG Music. I'm back with another video. Uh, it's kind of story time real quick, and then I'll get into what I want to talk about. Um, diminished arpeggios. Uh, diminished ideas sound wicked. They're cool, they're dark, they're evil sounding. Um, but I always struggled finding a way to make them sound like me or be usable for my style of playing, you know. Um, <clears throat> I think it's important to learn these ideas and experiment until you find a way to make them talk for you. So I'm going to go through kind of what my life with diminished arpeggios has been like in a really compressed way. So the first like diminished kind of stuff I learned goes way back, you know, it, the whole basically stair step the neck with like the one and four finger thing that a lot of us learn. So you go, you know, the first to fourth finger on whatever frets, you know, you go up one half step in a string until you get to the B string, you jump up two frets, but then you finish another half step. So like that. So I'm playing one, four, two, five, three, six, four, seven, uh, six, nine, then uh, seven, ten. Right? F, G sharp, B, D, F, G sharp, B, D, so on. It's just the same thing over and over again. So I I found that was, it was hard for my pinky, you know, and I've, I've played in bands where you had to do that. And uh, I was like, this is cool, but it, it's kind of like, it reminds me a lot of like Campbell Corpse. And they, those guys are the kings of that particular uh, kind of pattern. They have done just ridiculously cool stuff involving those kinds of things. You know, for sure, I mean, those guys are ridiculously awesome. Heavy as all get out. Love them. Anyway, moving on, uh, the next thing, the next diminished arpeggio I learned was the very, like, you think of very early Megadeth, Judas Priest, uh, Yngwie Malmsteen, Randy Rhodes, that kind of... <laughs> A lot of them would go like, you know, like that kind of shape. If I did it here, yeah, that would be F. So, yeah, it'd be the same thing G sharp, F, D, and then B. Same arpeggio if I do it there. And they're all connected by the ending note. You know, there's great examples of that kind of like throughout the history of, of music, not just metal. Um, but then, you know, playing those, learning those, you, you try to play something. As soon as you go into a solo and you try to do that, you sound like you're just lifting that off of someone else's recording, right? I, I don't like that. There's a couple of different things that went on here that I, I thought about and I wasn't very happy with the way that these ideas played out for myself. So the first thing I did was I took the first idea and the second idea and kind of combined them. So I did this to a point and then finished it with the other one. If you play this one, it's all the same. If I play this one, it doesn't go as high, but if you wanted to do that, you can actually add a little something to it, right? So what I played there was one, four, two, five, three, six, four, seven. Then I, I played just the six on the B string, and then four, seven on the high E. And then to finish it, I just shifted up and reversed the pattern. So I did 10, seven, nine, then 10, seven on the G string. And then six, nine, nine, six, and then uh, eight, five, seven, four, one. So I got the same place, you know, just a little differently. They kind of like got me thinking. Okay, so I can play these differently. Um, so I came up with a couple more ways that I thought were really sweet. Um, the first one being that same deal as a five string, two, one, two, one, two kind of arpeggio where I played two notes on one string with a hammer on uh, or a pull off 
and then one note on the next string and use some economy picking to get where I'm going. So I'll do F just like I've been doing. So I'm going to start the eighth fret of the A string. So F to A flat is A to 11. And then I grab the B, the ninth fret of the D string. And then I play this, uh, this note here. This is a, a E flat. And then finish the... Uh, right? And that kind of got me thinking, I'm like, well, that's really cool. You know, it's not exactly the same thing, but it's different. And it's got a nice sound to it. Now I want to finish it, so I, I use those same notes. So I got F, A flat, B, E flat, F, uh, A flat, B, like that. So that E flat I wanted, I was playing it, I played a D on accident because I was spaced out. You can throw that D in there, it sounds perfectly legitly, leg, legitly, legitimately cool. For fun, either's an option. I really liked, you know, the first one because it, like, made sense the way I wrote it. They got me thinking, this other one, when I went to the D. How can I make that idea? How can I expand on that? What can I do? Well, I, I thought, let's make that a six string arpeggio. So I did this. I went to the F on the, uh, I, mean, I probably didn't do exactly this key, but this is the idea, same arpeggio. So I put 13 to 16 on the low E string, 14 to 17 on the A. I use a different fingering. I use one three and then one four. I set myself up for 15th fret with my middle finger on the D, 13 to 16 with my first and third on the G, 15 on the B with the middle finger, and then 13 to 16 on the high E with my first and third. And doing so, I found that was easy to go into like diatonic or pentatonic type of flips, licks in one position. Which was kind of sweet. Uh, it, it opened up some doors. That's like C harmonic minor or whatever. F, F blue scale. Just whatever works, right? Those kinds of things kind of help me expand, and I wanted to share them with you so you could experiment for yourself. Um, don't ever think that uh, what you hear or what you see in guitar is all of it, because there's another way to do it. You can find it on your own. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, today I'm playing this ESP LTD uh, Air 1000 NT, the Tunematic Bridge. Um, love the reverse headstock, reverse inlays, sweet action on it, Fishman Fluids pickups, um, using this... Uh, PV Viper X2 on the 6534 mode in the red channel. Anyway, like I usually do, because I like the sound. And it's easy to sound awesome when you've got, you know, a lot of compression and distortion, even a low volume. But I hope that helps you a little bit with some different types of arpeggios um, and get you thinking about things that this doesn't seem usable right now, but, you know, eventually it will be, you know, because even for me, a lot of those diminished ideas, I just wouldn't do anything with them. Now I can actually incorporate some of those ideas into my improv and, and make things more interesting for myself as a player and hopefully for the listener, but you know, whatever. <laughs> anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, visit our website, www.brgmusic.com. Um, give me a call at 515-329-0120 and I will see you later. Bye.